Hey everybody, I'm here today to show you how to use an abacus. In this video tutorial, I'll be going over the basics of properly using an abacus. And this will be a full tutorial because I'll be showing you how to add, subtract, divide, and multiply. Let's get right into the video. As you can see, this is a 100 bead abacus. It has 10 different rungs and on each rung there are 10 beats. So let's get right into it. How do you add with an abacus? Well, it's important to know that each rung actually is going to represent a different place value. So you have the ones, the tens, the hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, one hundred thousands, millions, ten millions, one hundred millions, and then the billions, okay? so. Basically, we're going to start off with a very simple number. Let's say we do something like 4 plus 2. On the 1's rung over here, you're going to start off with the first number, which is 4. And then you're going to move on to bringing over the second number, which is 2. So we're going to add 2 more. And then you count what you have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 4 plus 2 is 6. Now we're going to do a little bit of a bigger number, something like 8 plus 4. So we can make use of this second rung, which once again, this is the 10's. So this one is this this 10 right here is worth 10 of these. This one 10 unit right here is worth 10 of these ones. Think of these as loonies and this as a $10 bill. Very simple, okay? So um, anyways, uh, what number did I say? I think it was eight plus four. I, I could be wrong, but I think it was eight plus four. So we're gonna start off with eight, then we're gonna add four more. One, two, and then now we have to trade these for this, like that, and then keep counting. 3, 4, 10, 11, 12. So 8 plus 4 is 10, 11, 12. It's 12. Very simple and straightforward. That's how you add with an abacus. Now, how do you subtract? Subtracting is kind of easy. It's, I would say it's even easier than adding when it comes to using an abacus. Let's say we were to do something like uh, 9 minus 2. So we're going to start off with a bigger number, which would be 9. So I'm going to move 9 beads like that, and we're going to subtract 2. So we're going to also move 2 beads back, okay? So 1, 2. So 9 minus 2 is whatever we have left over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 9 minus 2 is 7. We're going to work with a little bit of a bigger number, so that once again we can make use of the uh, second rung over here. We'll do something like um, 15 minus 6. So we're going to start off with 15, which is 10 plus 5 over here. So we have 15 right over there, and we're going to subtract 6 from this. So we're going to move 6 beads back. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now we can't move any more back over here, so we have to trade like this. This one comes back, these ones go over there. And then we continue counting from the five that we were at, six, okay? So 15 minus six is whatever we have left over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 15 minus six is nine, okay? Now moving on to multiplication. Now multiplication is just slightly harder with the abacus because you're actually gonna use two rungs on, or multiple rungs on different sides of the abacus. So you're gonna have rungs on the, you're gonna use the rungs on the bottom and then the rungs on the top, okay? And they're gonna sort of mirror each other. So like you have the ones, the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, and so forth, okay? So let's do a simple number. We're going, to do, we're going to do something like 3 times 5 for multiplication, okay? Now what you want to do is essentially um, you want to move one of the numbers, so 3 on the bottom. I'm going to move groups of 3 on the bottom, and every time I move a group of 3, okay, I'm going to be moving one of these over here at the top until this top reaches 5, okay? So there's a group of 3, and that's one group. There's another group of 3, that's two groups. Another group of three, that's three groups. And then one, trade, two, three, that's four groups. And another group of three, that's five groups. So we now moved five groups of three, which gives us 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So 15 is the answer of three times five. Very simple and straightforward. We'll do a little bit of a bigger number. We'll do something like four times six, okay? So four times six. Once again, we're gonna be moving groups of four and we're gonna be moving them six times. So we need to move six of these beads over. So there's a group of four and that's one, a group of four, that's two. 
And then we have one, two, trade, three, four. That's the third group, another group of four, the fourth group, another group of four, the fifth group, and then now we're gonna trade because we can't use any more over here. So trade, and then one, two, three, four. Okay, and that's gonna be the sixth group. So we did six groups of four, and our grand total is 10, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So that's how you do multiplication. Now division is going to be a little bit similar. Um, I would say division can be even easier depending on how you view it, okay? So we're gonna start off with a simple number like nine divided by three. So what you wanna do is you wanna essentially get the bigger number and get those beads moved at the bottom. So we now have nine beads here. And then every single time that we move th uh, the, the smaller number, so three, nine divided by three, the smaller number, every time that we move three beads back, we're gonna move one of these at the top here, okay? So there's one group of three. Okay, we moved one group of three. There's the second group of three. We moved the second group of three. And you're gonna keep going until there are no beads left. There's the third group of three. Right there. So we've moved all of the beads at the bottom and we moved three groups. So nine divided by three is three. Very simple, okay? Because there's three beads at the top here. Now we're gonna do a bigger number. Um, we will do something like 25 divided by five, okay? I'm just coming, this, coming up with this on the spot. So 25 divided by five. So get the bigger number on the bottom. 25, just like that, okay? And we're gonna divide it by five. So groups of five are gonna be moving backwards. So here's a group of five, and that's one group of five. Now we can't move any more back. There are none left here, so we're gonna trade. One of these for all of these. Very simple, okay? Now we're gonna move five more back, okay? Just like that. There's a second group, five more back. That's the third group, just like that, okay? And then we can't move any more, so we're gonna trade. Just like that. Five more back. That's the fourth group and five more back. That's the fifth group, okay? So 25 divided by five is actually five. Now I know this is complicated because unfortunately I chose numbers where the smaller number was the same as the answer. So three was the answer for the first one as well as a smaller number. And then five was the answer for this one as well as a smaller number. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose um, a different uh, answer. We're gonna do something like 12 divided by three, okay? So that'll be a little bit easier to understand. So we're gonna start off with the 12 at the bottom, okay? Just like that. So we have 12, and we're gonna do groups of three, and we're gonna count how many groups. So there's one, two, and I can't get any more from there, so I'm gonna trade and continue counting. Three, that's one group. One, two, three, that's another group. One, two, three, that's another group. One, two, three, that's another group, okay? So 12 divided by three is equal to one, two, three, four. And that's it. In this video, I've shown you how to use an abacus. This is a full tutorial. I've shown you how to add, how to subtract, how to divide, how to multiply with an abacus. This is a very useful tool. I know we use calculators now and you can probably do a lot of this in your head, but it is an extremely useful tool. And as, I shown, as I've shown you, I mean, with the place values, it goes up really, really high. And if you don't have a calculator and you can't do the math in your head, or you want just some additional help, this can be very, very useful. Or if you just wanted to learn how to use one because, you know, my kids use this to play, but, uh, you know, it's really useful to know how to actually use it for math. And it's, it's a very useful tool just in general to know how to use. And that's it. I mean, knowledge is power. The more you know, the better. So I'm gl re really glad that hopefully you stuck around for the whole video and you learned it. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think down below as a comment. And of course, be sure to subscribe for more great videos just like this one. And that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.